in St. Petersburg, Russia, where a single family ruled a dying empire. A family so powerful, they believed themselves ordained by God as absolute rulers. They built a fantastic world for themselves, St. Petersburg, the golden city of the Tsars. It dazzles the eye with sparkling fountains, extraordinary mansions, magnificent cathedrals, and the fabled Winter Palace the grandest royal residence in all of Europe. Each of his 460 rooms, a gilded marble. This is the home of the Romanovs, a royal family whose glittering dynasty endured for centuries and ended in bloodshed. Moscow, 1896. The coronation of Tsar Nicholas. He is the new ruler of the Russian Empire, an empire that covers one-sixth of the Earth's surface and dominates the lives of 130 million people. The Romanov dynasty has ruled Russia for almost 300 years. But Tsar Nicholas has little taste for the day-to-day -day burdens of governing his immense empire. His heart lies here, 16 miles from St. Petersburg, in the splendor of Alexander Palace, in the embrace of his family. The Tsarina Alexandra is the love of his life. Over the years, she presents Nicholas with four beautiful daughters and a son. The Tsar frolics, seemingly unaware that there's widespread poverty and famine throughout the land. And the first stirrings of revolt. But this is a world away from the palace with the Tsar's children, Olga, Tatyana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei live in a secluded paradise. The Romanovs want for nothing. When duty calls, Nicholas and Alexandra venture into St. Petersburg to entertain the nobility. But in 1914, their idyllic world begins to fall apart. World War I. It begins in a fever of patriotism. But the Tsar's ill-equipped army suffers appalling casualties. Seven million of his subjects are killed, wounded, or captured. A general reports the army is drowning in its own blood. Tens of thousands desert and join the growing Bolshevik uprising. The soft world of the Romanovs comes crashing down in the spring of 1917. A new leader is emerging, Vladimir Lenin. His revolutionaries arrest Nicholas and his family and confine them under guard in the Alexander Palace. Their every move is watched by the hostile Bolshevik guards.
The Romanovs must pay for the ravages of 300 years of Tsarist rule. Most of the servants are sent away, and the royal Romanovs toil like peasants in a vegetable garden. As the months go by, the huge palace is closed off room by room. The people thirst for revenge. They want the Romanovs to pay a higher price than mere palace confinement. The family is forced to leave the Alexander Palace. The Romanov daughters hastily sew the few remaining family jewels into their clothing. This could be their passport to safety. They hope the train will carry them west to England. But it goes east to Siberia, to the desolate and remote city of Ekaterinburg. The Romanovs are put in a building ominously called the House of Special Purpose. They live behind locked guarded doors in a few cramped rooms, prisoners. At midnight on July 16, 1918, Nicholas, his family, and the few remaining servants are awakened and herded into the cellar. They are not told why. Guards group them against the wall as though they're going to have their picture taken. Thus ends 300 years of Tsarist rule. The Tsar and his family are dumped into a single mass grave, their bodies doused with acid. Their disappearance fuels wild speculation. Over the decades, Witnesses come forward claiming to have seen, or sometimes even to be, one of the royal family. Then in 1991, a grisly scene in the woods near Ekaterinburg. The bones of the Romanovs are exhumed. DNA testing proves the entire family is dead. But for better or worse, the Romanov spirit lives on in the wondrous city of St. Petersburg and in the haunting tranquility of the Alexander Palace. <laughs>